and welcome to Soul What, a Soultopia podcast. My name is Michelle Welch. Thank you for joining us. And I'm Roger Welch. So what's up today, Michelle? So today we are talking about cabin fever and the things that can go on with us during our time spent in sheltering in place or whatever we called it. Or staying they home. Called it, staying at home for long periods of time. And we have a guest with us today or tonight. Really? Who? Yeah. So we have Lori LeBlanc. Um, she's a licensed counselor. She has a master's in counseling and a bachelor's in psychology. And I was like, woo, all these special, all these degrees. She also has a minor in theology and philosophy. She has worked in a mental hospital for seven years as a treatment manager and crisis interventionist. Lori has a private practice in Plano, and she has worked also in oncology for 10 years. Hello, Lori. How are you doing today? Hey, hey. Yeah, I'm going to try and hear you again. Can you say that again? I said I'm great. How are y'all doing? Um, Doing pretty well. Doing good. Yeah, doing well, all things considered. Yeah, so... So you uh, were speaking this weekend for Soultopia Sensation, uh, and I caught the tail end of that primarily because my sleep is off. You know, and, and it's funny that you say that and we're talking about cabin fever because that is actually one of the more severe symptoms of cabin fever. Is it? It is. It yeah. is. Yeah. <laughs> So, you know, when we, so um, when we talk about cabin fever, normally we talk about, um, oh, have to stay at home on a rainy weekend or uh, being snowed in, something like that, something very normal. And so we might have a little isolation, a little loneliness, but cabin fever can, the symptoms can get very severe and Uh, irregular sleep patterns are definitely one of those. Yeah, I was reading something today. I I tried to find it later to to show someone, but it was on, I don't know if it's on, like when I get on my computer or phone first thing in the morning, like Yahoo News, but then it leads me to all the other news places. Uh, And it was talking about how when you have a great environmental change, there was some psychology term for it, but that you can really get thrown off in all of your, just everything you're going through. It's like dis, it's just dysphoria or something. You just, and that's, again, one of the biggest things. It really is, Michelle. You know, so when we talk about, you know, normal cabin fever, you know, the isolation, the loneliness, you know, it's nothing. Because we know that we're, we can go to the movies. We can go to the grocery store. But, you know, with COVID-19, it, it, it's not your normal, typical weekend at home on a rainy weekend. Um, but, but, and so our, our cabin fever, that we call it, um, it, it can really amp up to distress and claustrophobia, getting irritable and just really restless that, that I can't do this kind mm-hmm. of feeling. But right. it can even get more severe than that. Um, you can start having a lack of motivation, um, hopelessness, helplessness, um, an irregular sleep pattern, um, a a real lack of patience and uh, an increased depression. And I I think a a couple of those are what I really worry about with families at home. Um, You know, they're used to that, that break, an eight hour break in their day away from everybody, but you know, that isn't always, you know, just that's not happening right now. And so we're spending a little bit more time with those we love than we're used to. Right. Yeah, I, I, I'm i spending a lot of time with this one right here. <laughs> What's wrong with that? <laughs> we always do. It's not like it really has changed it that much changed for us. It hasn't changed that much. We, we actually always do. So I don't know how much that. You know, so. But you know, but you know what, Michelle? It, it's one thing when you do it willingly. It's another thing when somebody's telling you that you have to stay home, that you have to stay, you know, six feet away from everybody. That social distancing. It's, it's so different. true. There's something about the minute somebody tells you, the minute you're told 
you can't go shop at this place. All of a sudden, you think of all the things you needed at that place. The, yes. Yes, yeah. it's absolutely true. It, it, it's like all of a sudden we're five years old again, you know, being told what we can and can't do. And we're just not used to that. Um, yeah. It's very strange. What are it's you? De it's, it's definitely not our normal routine. No. So I kind of had, and it didn't take a psychic to predict this, but I knew people would start, I, and I had said, I thought it would start about this week, mm -hmm. that people would start getting just, angsty just or even last week just starting to get where they were going to start probably breaking the quarantine or stay at home or whatever you want to call it and yeah. and and I don't know what parts of the country but here, here a lot of them already already were maybe they're staying six feet apart if they can but but yeah, you know I, but mm -hmm. I also knew that without being any kind of professional in your area, I knew that some of the depression and stuff was going to start setting in. Number one, because it seems like the fear of the unknown is going to, we're not get, still not getting a lot of answers. And exactly. of course, not that the money's more important than, than the people, but I knew that the money start was start, stuff was going to start kicking in of, of being frightened and more layoffs have come. I know a lot more, personally, I know a lot more people, and I don't, this can come out wrong. I personally know a lot more people that have lost their jobs and are extremely depressed right now than have lost things directly health-wise. Just me personally. Okay, now I'm not saying I'm comparing or whatever. I'm just saying I'm now I think we're going to start seeing the ramifications of that with depression. Absolutely. Absolutely. And, you know, and it's weird that you say that because I was um, out and about. And, and yes, it was um, urgent that I get out and about yesterday. Um, I wasn't just playing around. Uh -uh. Uh, it, was, it was necessary. Um, but I was seeing all these places that are hiring. And I was like, okay, wait a minute. We're supposed to be staying at home. Everything's supposed to be real chill right now, but I'm still seeing these places with help wanted signs out. Mm -hmm. I was a little baffled. Well, I actually know somebody who was laid off. I won't go into the place or the name, but they actually took a job at a local grocery store. You know, sometimes it's just, we're so used to our routines, mm -hmm. Michelle. We just, we have a routine. We get up, we go to work, that's what we do. And sometimes it's not a matter of how much money we're making. It's not necessarily a matter of, you know, what our title is. Is that we're so used to getting up and going to work that a lot of times we just have to have that, regardless right. of where we go to work at. Well, yeah, and I kind of admired it because I and kind of and everybody's situation is different. But instead, of, I remember after 9/11, I knew a lot of CEOs, CFOs, people making a lot of money. Um, that for literally, I knew a couple for like six to seven years were still sitting on their couches, living off of the, their savings, whining because they couldn't find a job, yet they wouldn't get up and go work somewhere <laughs> because it was beneath them. So I really admire somebody them. that's going out and looking for another job. That makes sense to me. You know, if they, they lost that job. Yeah, like she just said, they, you'd get bored. And it's also, I think, healthier right. to keep yourself somewhat on a schedule maybe i think it's incredibly important that we stay on a schedule um even even if it's a brand new schedule we're used to getting up at six o'clock and getting dressed and going to work and and i'm telling people all the time continue to do that get up get yeah. dressed uh, put on your makeup fix your hair um, just to go sit in the kitchen and have breakfast you know and, and nobody said that we couldn't go outside um, go out on your porch, go out in your yard. Um, you know, I remember when I was young and yes, I'm old, but um, I remember when I was young, people used to sit out on their front porch all the time. It was done. You know, and I keep thinking people go sit out on your porch. Hey, if you live in West Virginia, you can have, everybody has couches on their front porches. 
There went our audience. There went my West Virginia audience. No, they do. Well, Erica has a couch on her front porch. The kids love it. I mean, they all sit out there and they all talk to everybody. No, that's the joke, though, in West Virginia, because they all have their couches out on their front porch. It's the truth. You know, it's not, just West, it's not just West Virginia. I've been to some places in Texas that, yeah. yeah, they've got the couch on the front porch and the old Chevy out there, and everybody goes and sits in, and yeah. It's and really, there's nothing wrong with it, because, hey, if it's comfy yeah. and you got your neighbors joining, your life's probably more fun than if you don't even know who your neighbor is, you know, and exactly. don't know anybody everybody in your neighborhood. Chill. Yeah. You've got to have somewhere to chill and drink a beer. Yeah. So that's yeah. another, when he said beer, that made me think of something else. That's the other one of my concerns. Because I understand that people are saying, you know, okay, so the liquor stores needed to stay open, allegedly, because they were essential, because if somebody was an alcoholic, if they went through D DTs, withdrawals, or whatever, they couldn't go to the hospital, so then they would die of a seizure from alcoholism. That was the argument, and, and a lot of people got mad at me because I was like, they're essential, and my store can't be open. It's like a spiritual store that has herbs and things for positive, but whatever. So even that aside, I'm kind of wondering now the fallout from having been I, in so long, and I wonder how much uh, I'll be, it'll be interesting to, and sad maybe to see how much the al alcoholism and the effects of that after this. Michelle, I think we're going to see a lot of fallout and not from the virus itself. Um, you're right. And if you've never seen anybody go through DTs before, it's horrible yeah. and it's scary and people die. So I do understand why they did that. Um, but I'm with you. My concern is, is that I've seen people posting pictures of the bars that they've set up at their house. And I'm like, why? Why are you doing this? Mm -hmm. You know, I, I don't understand. Do something. Exercise. Get up. Remember all those promises that you made yourself on New Year's Eve? Do them. <laughs> Now's yeah. the time. You know, yeah, that's sitting true. around drinking or watching Netflix is not it. Well, we did watch a little bit of Tiger King. Mm. I, will, I think I finished <laughs> Netflix and Hulu. Oh, you've been you've been all the way through Netflix yeah, and Hulu. I got all of them. Even yeah. the back page. So, <laughs> Roger, maybe you should check out Criterion. Um, my son got it, and he is loving it. Okay. He, he benched all of the um, uh, Godzilla movies. I was rewatching Monster Quest today. Was Were you that? really? Yep. Oh, Monster Quest. Is a you know is a series. I forget how many seasons. Our ongoing yeah. joke. Yeah, our ongoing joke is that he, when we had the things where you had to save all of them. I don't know TiVo, whatever it was, Direct TV. Mm -hmm. He, uh, I went through all these and I was like, what is all this NASA stuff saved on our TV? Like, what is that? It was Some NA, sort of NASA files. I was like, what are the NASA files? I, this is getting, I'm going to delete all these NASA files because I am finally, he had to break it to me. It was NASA. NASA. <laughs> <laughs> and he's like, have you never like, you know, NASA and I was like, oh, it's just when I was reading it, it looked like NASA to me. All caps, right? <laughs> <laughs> so definitely went out that night and bought her a shirt that said NASA. Yeah, I now have a NASA shirt that I never <laughs> wear. I think it's <laughs> the last thing in the closet. <laughs> hey, I think now's a good time to, for people to to start learning something new, do something fun. Yeah. Um, Teach the kids something that you never thought that you would teach them, like your grandma's favorite recipe or what all the crystals do or yeah. how to put a spell on your brother. I don't know. Yeah, <laughs> that's a great idea. <laughs> what about the... Not, what, not that I'm encouraging that. Not that I'm encouraging but what that. about the... Well, I think it's a great idea to teach them something new, teach them something, you know, about family. You know, it, it's interesting yeah. because we... We were saying today how much time is spent with the kids at school, and I'm sure we got to that place for a reason. You know, kids aren't working the farm like they used to and all that kind right. of stuff, like my right. grandmother did. I mean, she definitely mm -hmm. worked the farm. I think my mother was supposed to, but she sat under a tree. Only and farm they know about is the Minecraft. Huh? <laughs> Only farm they know about is Minecraft. Yeah, but, I mean, 
but that, there's reasons why we got to go into school for so long. That's a whole nother show. But they they get they yeah. can get school done pretty quickly, to be honest with you. Uh, but I know a lot of people are having trouble getting their kids to do their v- virtual schoolwork. Do you have any suggestions for that? I do, and it goes right back to setting a schedule. You know, you you have to. You've got to have that schedule. It, it, it's not sleeping till noon. It's not taking that nap. It's everybody gets up at eight o'clock and we get a bath and we get dressed and we move to a different room where we do school for two hours. And then we get up and we do something that we don't get to do at school. We get to play for 30 minutes, mm-hmm. jump around, exercise, whatever, and then go back and do some more school. You know, and don't forget to include art and music in that. Even if they're not getting credit, stop and do something fun with them. Right. Yeah. We've been doing lots of, I, I didn't tell Matt I sent it to him, but I sent you like, you can just look at them later. But I sent four pictures. Yeah. To. I saw the one oh, pop up when you was going through. Oh, it. did. Yeah. I sent, did you show any of them? I, I sent four pictures of, we've been outside a lot. That's okay. When we, when we start golf here in a couple of days, I'll be taking video and posting the videos of Michelle playing golf. You're we'll probably see, gonna, you know what you're we'll see, see how good this swing is. You're gonna, what you're going to see, because I was a tennis player, not a golfer, but what you're going to see yeah. is golf clubs flying through the air. We'll That's see how that mouth see. is. That's going to be great. Son of a. I cannot wait to see that. that you're gonna that's going to be great. That's yeah. going to be our new entertainment. We don't need Netflix. We need Michelle with the golf club. Oh, well, when I was a tennis player, the racket flew over. It brought out the demon in me. I would, if I missed a shot, well, I actually had a coach that if, like, if you missed an overhead lob, like, they, we used to come, like, crush it, but it was like a smash as well, you know, overhead, and um, if you missed it, you would have, she'd hit, hit a tennis ball over the fence into the parking lot, and you'd have to run, go find it, and then run, like, 10 laps around Longview High School. How many tennis rackets did you go through? Right after that tennis ball ran over the fence that she hit, my racket went right over it. Like, yeah, I had a lot. Of, he bought some tennis rackets the other day. Tell her what happened. I was like, I bought some tennis rackets to, uh, you know, so we can go over there and start playing a little tennis. Just hit the ball back and forth. Really? So what? how's it strong? How's it this? How's it that? I was like, what the hell does it matter? I, li- yeah. Literally, I look, I said, what quarter, what's the width, the grip width? What's the, what quarter inch? I'm seven and three quarters. I mean, like maybe that's my hat size. I can't remember. What that's your it. hat size. But um, <laughs> then I was like, what what string does it have it? Like, I'm, these are going to need to be restrung. And he showed it to me. He goes, they've gotten a lot better. And I was like, I was like such a snob about it. But golf, you know, and I think just do something, like you said before, take up something new maybe. Yes. You this know, is absolutely just, the time to do that. You know, you need something that you can really focus on. Yeah. And I, I think learning something new is absolutely it. And if you're in a family situation, the whole family should get involved. Make a game out of it. Yeah. You know, divide, divide up and, and see who can learn something the fastest or who can, yeah. can research something the fastest. I mean, make it fun for the whole family. I wonder if um, my kids aren't home. My daughter's coming home this weekend. But I, well, Lizzie's home and back and mm-hmm. forth, and she is my daughter. But we've been having a blast with Lizzie. She's easy. Yeah. She's been helping. She's here. Uh, she's going home. But she's she, going home for a couple of days because she's got a date. Oh. Ooh. Well, she didn't tell me that. Because it just came up this afternoon. Oh. Well, okay. what is today's Ooh. Tuesday? I think, think it's actually she wanted you to Thursday say that? or Friday. Whoops. Don't care. She's not dating. She's not dating the fish, is she? No. Yeah. So. Not the fish. <laughs> not the fish. Yeah. Well, she caught the. Man, that happened so fast. So we were talking to the like park ranger lady. Amy is her name, and so she's in her cart, and we're talking, and literally Lizzie goes, "I think I need to," and then boy, she just reeled that. It happened in like a second. And did yeah. you see that picture with Roger? It was like. He looked scared of the fish. I caught yeah. him just at the right moment yeah. where he looked scared. Mm. You did. And then there's like a three to four foot snake out there. They've had snake sightings. Just water so snakes. It was perfect. Yeah. It was but, perfect. So we've been having a blast doing that. But I'm wondering if people, there he is. Look at you. Yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> you are looking good. I think he's just checking it out. What is that called? Large mouth bass yeah it's a bass and we've learned the trick see you hold it way far out from you towards the camera and the fish looks bigger 
That's the trick. Ooh, it was still pretty big though. Canoe. Yeah. And so also there's a goo there's two goose in our neighborhood that are uh, like what do you call it? Roosting on their eggs. Nesting. Well Roosting. I think roosters roost. No, roosters. They're don't goosing roost. on their eggs. They're goose. <laughs> Gooseling. They're they have goosling. eggs. They have eggs. They're sitting on. Goosling. And if you go near them, they hiss at you. I didn't know. That. I think that I thought they would be like, Ooh. like, gawking at you or whatever. Go, they hiss. They do. Sad, They're, but maybe you shouldn't get close enough to get a video. I mean, well, I was, actually, I was not one very co It didn't hiss really at me. It hissed at a couple of dogs that walked up. Mm -hmm. But yeah, we've been having fun. But I'm just wondering if like yeah. people are. I wonder if they're bonding more and getting off of their like phones or and doing more stuff like that. Probably they're probably getting bored to death on their phone I all hope the time. So. I, I really hope so because that's why I love watching the, the pictures of you guys out fishing and everything. Um, so many families could be doing that right now and, and spending that quality time together. And I just, I worry that we're just not taking advantage of this the way we should. Yeah. yeah. Um, I feel for people who are like in really densely populated areas and have one, you know, apartment for 10 people, or eight, a family of eight or something. I just don't, I, I would find that very, very difficult. I feel for them. I, I, I will also say, I think it's hard to find areas to volunteer. There's a lot of places that where they'll tell you to give money but just to go and actually volunteer, like I used to volunteer at the North Texas Food Bank, and I volunteer a lot of places and been on some of those boards mm -hmm. and stuff, but they don't always make it easy to volunteer. Right. It doesn't. Right. They don't make it that easy. And maybe on purpose, because they want you to, they want to know your history or all that kind of stuff, probably. But it kind of... You want to get involved and help and i guess during this time it's the social distancing too so exactly and a lot of places yeah you can't you can't start anything new right now like volunteering somewhere it, it's very hard you know because it is you know the people they know have already been vetted and screened and and everything's fine but yeah, yeah, yeah. You, you can't unless some of the the new food banks need help because there's a lot of food banks that got set up really quick yeah i mean i know that uh, the north texas food bank brought in the national guard to help them and they're set up like american airlines mm -hmm. but it's the wow. national guard is helping them hand out the food you know you almost, you almost have to um i i was i don't guess i was i was shocked at at the people rushing for toilet paper and things um, but I'm, I guess I'm still shocked that we're still, um, have people that are concerned about not having enough food. And I worry about them on a daily basis. Are they just, is this just the time when they're able to take advantage of being able to get food that they need for their families? What do they do the rest of the time? Uh, yeah, you wonder. Well, I remember when I volunteered and did, you know, I was in, on the, Dallas Women's Foundation, which is now the Texas Women's Foundation. And one of the things about the North Texas Food Bank that I learned, if I recall this correctly, is there's so much more hunger in our city than we even realized. So they would make those backpacks for kids uh, yes. to take home, even for when they weren't at school, because there was the hunger is just unbelievable. Mm -hmm. You don't think about how bad it is just even in our city. It's yeah. bad. So you can imagine during this time... I don't know, because they're not getting, and da I know Dallas was still providing the hot, their, their lunches and things right. like that, but it's Yeah, a lot just, of schools are doing that, pick up lunches and all for the kids, but. Yeah, but I know it's, it's for the kids, even like for my daughter, you know, so, and she really cares about, she's a very compassionate person. My daughter, Tanner, Lizzie's compassionate too. Lizzie's missing school. She's missing her friends, but my daughter, you know, she's graduating in three years, which was a huge accomplishment. Of course, yeah. there's bigger issues in the world, but what I try to tell her is it's all relative. What it, yes, you can, you're not being selfish to also feel some sorrow for what you're going through. That doesn't, and I, right? I mean, it doesn't make you feel, be a selfish person 
yes, there's this person that has had this tragedy, and it may be on a 10 on this tragedy scale, but you still may have tragedy, and you can, you can, uh, you can state that, that you feel yeah. bad that you aren't, didn't get to celebrate your 21st birthday with anybody, and that you're graduating, and you're not getting to celebrate that, you know, yes. you're hoping. You know, and, yeah. and, it, and it's true, Michelle, I mean, and, and we shouldn't, you know, it, it shouldn't be, let me, let me judge my sorrow against your sorrow. You know, it should be, everybody feels things differently. And I don't care what social class you're in. I don't care what color your skin is. I don't care about any of that. You're allowed to grieve for anything you want to in any way that you want to. And nobody should make you feel bad about that ever. Yeah, I think you should be able to grieve when we all and whatever, whatever the loss, however the loss comes. And and right now there's a lot of it. Right. Definitely. Yeah. And so she's I, I can tell, you know, she was feeling depressed. She has a lot of anxiety. She I can feel and she had an incident happen where she watched a couple of days ago. You know, a lady step in front of a train intentionally. The they the train ended up stopping uh, in Austin, and then another friend of mine observed somebody about in Dallas stepping off of the of an overpass. So I know I could feel it just energetically mm -hmm. the shift, but people are starting to really take things to heart. You see those things that's traumatic, right? Yep. And yes. so I guess you know there's the suicide hotline numbers and. The suicide prevention hotline, the board that I was on in Dallas, actually closed down probably about eight years ago. You know, it's Michelle, what a lot of people now. don't know is that there are what's called a warm line, W-A-R-M, mm -hmm. a warm line. You don't have to be the, to the point of being suicidal to need somebody to talk to. As a matter of fact, if, if people, and if more people knew about this, that there's somebody that they can talk to before they get to that point, they may not need the suicide hotline. Mm. Yeah, good point. They might not make it to that, yeah. to where they would have to have that. Right. Yeah. So yeah. what is the funniest thing you've seen to cheer somebody up that they've done or hurt that you've heard about? The fact. The funniest thing that's that you know? Yeah, like what have people been doing to try to be, stay hopeful and cheer? Stay hopeful and cheerful. Yeah. I live like that video. I saw it on Facebook. A couple of people posted where they took the fence panel, and on each side of the um, the um, neighbors, and folded it down so they could talk back and forth in the backyard. Yeah, my friend oh, posted that. that. Yeah, that was pretty cool. Uh, yeah. So there's this family that I know that took all the boxes from all the things that were being delivered and they dressed them up and made little uh, robots of everybody in their family and put them out in the front yard for everybody to see. Oh, that's mm -hmm. cute. Do you have the ones, the people that are dressing up in their costumes or even like really dressy dressy <laughs> and going, <laughs> taking the trash out and checking the mail and stuff like that? That's good. Right. Roger, I was coming home from work the other day and I'm I'm coming and I'm driving down the street and all of a sudden here comes this yellow um I guess dinosaur dinosaur. Here comes this man dressed in his yellow dinosaur. It was like eight feet tall. It was one of those blow up things and yep. he's just walking down the road. And I just I wish I could have stopped and taken a picture. It was hilarious. <laughs> See? Roger would do that, and maybe you should start dressing up in your Bigfoot yeah. costume. I could do that. We need to oh, get yeah. you. That'd be hot, though. Yeah, it would. At least those dinosaurs. It's like a little fan blowing in there. There's a fan blowing. Up. That's something blows it up. Yeah. That's okay, Roger. Just do it at night. I'm sure it'll be fine. Yeah, it'll be I'm fine. Sure Not a problem. Like, I'll go for you or I can, yeah, no, I'll run across night. across the road over here. Bigfoot couple of sighting. Times. We'll we see how long before it hits the news. <laughs> Now, it'd be hilarious. I'll do that. Pose. I think we need to get you a costume. I'll do the pose. And you could swing, you know, the one where you're swinging on the, yeah. the thing. Yeah. So I don't know. It's, it's a delicate balance between trying to enjoy and, you know, make the most of the time, but, and then feelings 
sad for the people who are struggling, you mm -hmm. know, and, and but yes. how do you how do you strike that balance? You know, God, Michelle, life life is is about finding that balance. But you know, I think I think it's okay for us to enjoy ourselves and help where we can. And it's like we were talking about, there's not a lot of options to help right now. But if you see somebody in need, if you see someone that needs help, help. You know, there's nothing mm -hmm. that says that you can't still help somebody. Yeah. One of my biggest things that I've learned from this is, I knew it, but it's really shown me how people respond to fear so differently. Yes. Um, I, I keep telling Roger, when I'm afraid, I get def I get defensive really quick like even with tanner when she called me i immediately was in fear for her and for jordan that maybe he was going to get out of the car and go be in harm's way so i immediately right. sound kind of i jump i and that's usually fear now that doesn't make my the way i react appropriate but that is the way i react typically or something let's say at the store and i hear oh you know something happened, I'm like, I may go, what do you mean? You know, and that usually is underneath that is I'm just scared. And I think that may be why all these people are just getting at each other. I hope that's the main reason is just that they're just scared and that that will be tempered over time. I absolutely agree, Michelle. I absolutely agree. And it's like you pointed out the other day, and I had a, a, a reminder of this the other day too, that we, we have to stop and, and remember that everybody's going to face this differently. It's going to come out differently the way they respond. Some people joke, some people cry, some people scream, yell, you know, but whatever they're doing, we have to stop and just remember that they're being affected by all this in a way that we'll never understand. Right. And, and a lot of times we don't get to hear that story of what's going on with them and why they're responding the way they do. So I think we just really have to step back and, and give everybody that benefit of the doubt that there's, you know, just there's something going on and they probably did not mean to respond that way. And, you know, we just, we just need to say, Hey, it, it's okay. Is there anything I can do for you? Yeah. Oh, I'm, I'm listening. Um, but all of a sudden I was really distracted. Um, we've got Pixie in here apparently. Um, so we're, we are in the middle of the podcast, mm -hmm. you guys. Um, so <laughs> um, everybody needs something to be proud okay. of or happy of it, but look at this. There's pigs. Aww. Aww. See? So that's a happy for that's me, but it's happy. also a really sad for me. So it's like, it's bittersweet. Hi, baby. I can't believe y'all just did this to me right now. It's Seriously. okay. Aww. Hi, baby girl. Aww. Aww. Okay. Oh, I'm. It's all um, good. Now I'm going to start crying. <laughs> no. Why? Um, I miss her. She's living with Lizzie. And it's, she she's, yeah, she's living the good life with Lizzie. But, yeah. Huh. Hi, baby. <laughs> Aw. Uh, yeah. It's, we have to share the love, Michelle. Yeah, I know. It's, mm. it's all good. Uh, <laughs> okay. You can talk. <laughs> <laughs> I'm <not> serious. <laughs> So what are things that, let's make a list here. What are things people need to be doing every day to get out, just the, out of their own way, really? Set a schedule. Set a schedule for everybody in the house if you have to. Get, again, get up, get dressed. You know, do more things as a family. It's okay to get outside and do a little exercising. Do exercising in your house. Learn some new healthy recipes. Um if there's eight people in a two bedroom apartment, then again, schedule two people to be out on the patio, two people to be off walking, two people to be taking baths. I mean, just make a schedule so that everybody's not in the same place at the same time. And if you are, you're doing something that everybody's enjoying, kicking it back, making popcorn, watching a movie or playing a card game, break out with the board games. Now's the perfect time for that. Yeah. Makes sense. Fish. Golf. Yeah. Yes. Do you want to do yeah. readings? Sure. we got a few minutes. Did you ask Lori if she was up for it? No, I did not. Are you going to bring out your alien? Sure. Ask the alien. We only have like four minutes left. 
four minutes left. Uh, Lori, did you have anything else you wanted to cover that we haven't covered? I think we've covered everything. Mm -hmm. When you post this video, I'll go in and put a couple of phone numbers for people in case they um, want the numbers for the warm lines or the crisis lines or anything. Okay. Um, is there any suggestion for as things start to open back up, um, anything different or pretty much um, the same? I think some people have forgotten how to drive uh, being home <laughs> for a couple of weeks. And so I'm just going to remind everybody to um, drive safely. Yeah. And um, maybe an online driving class. <laughs> <laughs> you know, that could be a bad thing. Maybe maybe we could all just practice. You know, get in, the, get in the chair with something and just kind of practice driving. Make sure you have your blinker, know where it's at, how it works. Yeah. But not on oh, Grand Theft Auto. Don't be practicing there. Yes, that's yeah. not. I've never yeah. even done or, that. Or what's, so that, or what's that one with Luigi in them? Um, oh, Mario Kart. Mario oh, yeah, Kart. I crash every Mario time Kart. on that one. Yeah. We used yeah. to play yeah. that one all the time. Yeah, we did. Okay, so you want to <laughs> do some? Well, is there anybody else? Well, we didn't it? ask, so I don't have mine on. Oh, is your phone even on over there? It is. It, it'll it, be on for like five more seconds probably. Yeah. So we've got two minutes if we wanted to, but it's going to, you can do what you want to do with it. Well, the only problem with it, him is the fact that it's, uh, you know, they yes, have to no, actually, oh, okay. it's so like just, we can questions use cards. they have to ask. Do you have any cards on you? I do. Okay. So I, if we have time, um, if he if he gets anybody that wants one, otherwise we can just do like a general message. Yeah, um, Dawn really said fast. she would. Um, if, she we're like a do, if we're gonna do a general message, I'm gonna use my oracle cards. Um, well, we got one though. Dawn wants a reading. Dawn. Mm -hmm. Who? Dawn, Dawn wants a reading. Dawn. Okay, I thought you were correct. So Dawn, I'm gonna read from uh, Lightseers. Here, I'll take these. Those, they're all good. That one's really good. That goddess. That. Um, I'm reading from Chris Ann's. Light Sears Tarot. She's going to be endorsing my book, so I love Chris Ann. Ooh. Not just for that reason, but she's just amazing. Um, she's with Hay House, and her, she's the Light Sears Tarot. And this I'm going to read from the Gilded Tarot. Oh, yeah. That's Chiro. The first, the first set that I bought from Selkopia. Yeah, oh, yay. Chiro Marchetti, and mm -hmm. you're reading from The Modern Witch. The Modern Witch. By Sterling Ethos. All right, so general reading for Dawn. Ooh, these are thick. So the reason I responded that way is that is my little Pixie. It was all of ours, and Pixie decided that we got a reading from Kath, one of our readers, Kathy Cavanaugh, that who's an animal reader, and she's wonderful, and she said that, um, and I'm very close to Pixie, that Pixie really needed to go be with Lizzie and live with Lizzie, and so, She's very happy there, but it makes me very, it's very good to see her, but it makes me very, very, very sad uh, to see her too. Aww. Even though it's probably what's best for her. It wasn't because anything was wrong, it's just that, and Lizzie's um, other dog passed away. Mm -hmm. So Lizzie Aww. has Pixie. All right. Oopsies. All right, so we'll just read one card, Lori. From okay. Dawn. God, I'm trying to make sure it's just one card. All right, so Dawn, I'm getting just make sure that you, um, whatever you're working on, just travel lightly. Uh, drop some of the things that you're carrying along with you right now in life, just specifically. This would be a good time to just get rid of some junk. Uh, in fact, not junk. They may be things that you that actually are hard to get rid of, but you're carrying too heavy of a load. Uh, specifically, it's it's stopping you from accomplishing or getting to some other things that you want to make room for in your life, and you need to just uh, just lighten the load. Go for it, Roger. So I've got the hermit card here. <clears throat> a little bit different take on the hermit card, you'll notice. Uh, but what I notice is not just the fact that it's hermit card, it's the fact that uh, there's a laptop here, and she's actually, looks like she's closing the lid on the on the laptop. So I take that as, you know, you stay, stepping away from all the electronics, the, you know, all that type of um, social media, things like that. Step away from it. 
um, take some time out to yourself, kind of start reflecting on life, what's important to you, what you want to accomplish, and, um, you know, really take up time. Like we've been talking about. Yeah, just for okay. you. And get away from that, th the computer, the online stuff, online games, social media, anything like that. Just take a break from it. Uh, take a break from listening to all the, you know, the BS and everything else and, you know, okay. reflect on yourself. Lori? So I got the Five of Pentacles. Can you see yeah. it? Yeah, pretty. And so what I'm getting from this is that you are going through a hardship, but just know that, and it's funny because this card, I don't know if you can see it or not, but there's a lady holding a baby and then there's someone standing over here. There's a gentleman standing over here with his hat in his hand like, Oh gosh, how can I, how can I help you? So what I'm getting from this is that you're going through a hardship, but there is a better outcome and somebody is coming along that is going to help you and it's going to be okay. Very good. Do you want to do another one? Uh, Lexi. Okay. So this is for Lexi. Oh, okay. Uh-huh. All right. So Miss Lexi. You want to start? Go ahead. No, I'll let you go ahead. So I got the Ace of Swords. Ace of Swords. Um, Lexi, don't forget those gifts that just pop up out of nowhere. Okay? Take those for what they are, their gift, and, you know, and enjoy them. Okay, that was short. Lori, you want to go? No, go ahead. Okay. Uh, I need another card. I'm just strolling a little bit. <laughs> okay. I can go ahead and go while you're yeah, doing go. that. Okay, so I got for you the Page of Pentacles. Okay. And I love this card. Um, but um, I think there's good news coming for you. Or you're going to be the bearer of good news. I, I, there's some good news coming. This is what I'm getting. Um, I keep focusing on the 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 feathers on top of his head. They're like golden, golden, mm -hmm. glowing feathers on the top of his head. Um, I would look up the meaning for feathers. I know I know it, but I can't think of it right off the top of my head because I usually don't read. <laughs> <laughs> live on TV, but, um, yeah, but there's definitely good news coming. But yeah. I get that messenger aspect too. I also get that you're, you're using this time for some contemplation of, I, I got a lot of wands. Uh, first of all, if it's the let's see, I'm thinking about and I think it is. Clay has something looking over his shoulder. I don't feel that it's ominous, but yet it's something that felt like it was something very secure, yet now he's not knowing if it's 100% secure or not. I feel like it's more secure than he might think, but the verdict is still out. Um, there's some free will on the other end, okay? You're looking out, Lexi, and just in your grounded, stable self that you have, there is one thing, and this is what took me so long because I want to make sure I had it right. There is one area in your life that feels like it's just going to about to dwindle out. You keep tending it. You keep tending it. You keep feeding the fire. You keep feeding the fire. You keep adding the little, what do you call that stuff to it to make it keep kindling. going, kindling it. And I'm not sure, but what maybe that needs to go ahead and burn out because there are some things that are better for you than that thing that you keep trying so hard to keep kindling. Awesome. Okay. And let's do one just general, and then we'll be done. Like fast. <laughs> I'm going to use 
I'm going to use this deck really fast. I'm going to use the Afro Goddess Tarot Arcanas. Um, it is by Andrea Furtick, and it is absolutely gorgeous, you guys. This is like one of the prettiest decks. The self-published deck. I am going to use my Archangel Oracle card. Yeah. I love them much better. Yeah, those are going to be collector's editions before too long, if they're not already, by Doreen Virtue. Okay, so Carla says she wants one. Okay, so we're not doing general reading for Carla. Okay, let me put my... Are you, oh, wait, did you mean general, like in general for everybody? Or That's general what I meant, because we didn't have a name. Oh, okay. okay. So Carla. So we're going to do it for Carla? Yes, All right, let me switch back decks. All right. Oh, these cards are so pretty. All right, I'll go first on this one. First of all, Carly, you need to get up and get moving. Um, if you're not, it needs to be walking. It needs, this is physical exercise. And it's something that you, where you need to move swiftly. So it's not necessarily weight bearing exercise, but it's something where you need to be swiftly walking or doing something like that just really a physical activity and if you're not already doing that if you are already doing it you need to walk faster another um i'm going to see what else because yeah so the other thing is whatever it is you're thinking that you want right now the biggest thing that's on your mind you need to start manifesting more for that really intending it because once and make sure that's what you really want and it's the desire of your heart because you are going to bring it in very, very quickly if you'll get up off your tail mentally and bring it in. But once you decide to do it, it's going to come in really quickly. Go. And it's very oh. strange. I got the Page of Pentacles for you, too, which is really mm -hmm. kind of uh, wigging me out. But... Um, whatever it is that, and, and I agree, it's something that you need to move on quickly but, and because it's going to be good news. So you need to hurry up and do whatever it is you're supposed to be doing. Yeah. Roger. Hurry, hurry. So <laughs> I got the, uh, King of Wands. Um, and the thing is about this one is, is that she's, her throne she's sitting on looks very box-like, very solid. Um, but it, Carl, I feel like there's some decisions you're actually contemplating because she has this very contemplating look on her face on this king of wands um just you really need to sit down and really think through this whole process of what you're contemplating and really work it the decision you make from what the outcome actually is that you want and how to get there yeah, so be careful what yeah. you're manifesting and be very specific in your in your intentions. I got that too. Yeah, exactly. Be very, very specific in it. Uh, well, thank you, Lori, for joining us. Sorry I had a little Thanks moment there with Pixie. Me. but uh, no. Thanks have, for having me. Counseling session regarding Pixie after this, but no, I'm kidding. Uh, no, <laughs> thank <me>. you. <laughs> yeah, thank you so much. And how can people reach you? Um, are you taking any new clients? Um, I am taking new clients. Uh, I'm doing a lot of them virtually right now mm -hmm. uh, on Zoom or, or however they want to do it. Um, and so they can, it's LeBlanc Counseling. Uh, you can find me on Facebook or uh, a web search. We'll quickly give you uh, my information. I'm in Plano. Okay, so LeBlanc that's L-E-B-L-A-N-C Counseling at, oh, on Facebook. On Facebook. Okay. LeBlanc yeah. Counseling. Or, or just Google LeBlancCounseling.com. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Perfect. Well, thank yeah. you so much, really, for joining us and for also this weekend doing, if you guys want to watch a recording of her, it's posted on, of Lori on our Soultopia page, also Soul on my, my Michelle Welch page, I believe, page. too, yeah. or just my Facebook page on Michelle just Welch. Make, make sure you watch the second part, not the first part. It had we had some glitches, yeah. You know, I think a lot of people are having glitches with all kinds of yeah. stuff. Yeah, I that was weird. That was very strange. Well, we haven't had any tonight. Mine are always <laughs> minor. See, mine are always my glitches. There, I can't ever blame anybody but myself because it's all Michelle, Michelle or user error. Almost always. Yeah. You want to know what my favorite one is that you do? What? 
So she'll take the multi-strip outlet, plug her computer in, and then figure out the multi-strip outlet's not plugged in and plug it into the multi-strip outlet. <laughs> absolute favorite thing that she, I'll walk over she said my computer's not charging yeah no shit Sherlock it's plugged into <laughs> itself good job Michelle good job that didn't work <laughs> nobody ever told me that <laughs> anyway, thanks again uh, that's it for this week you can listen to Soul Wet on Spotify the iHeartRadio app Google Podcasts, iTunes, and of course by watching live on YouTube at Michelle Soltopia and on both of our Facebook pages at So What and at Soltopia Holistic Bully Soltopia Holistic Boutique. Thank you guys for listening to So What, where we discuss and you decide what's important to your soul. Good night, you guys. Good night, guys. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs>